I want to stress very, very highly you get a really good record. At any past group here at Circuit, they all say the lab groups are super important. Is there no chairs for these seats right here? I don't know what happened. There's a chair over there. Maybe, I don't know, somebody stuck off with those chairs. There's another chair right here. What do you think here? I'll, I'll find two chairs. Okay, so lab groups become super important. And the reason why lab groups become super important is that you're going to get a circuit kit. And that effectively has all of the elements that you will need for the semester. When you do the PLCs, you need that kit. And my experience is, is that the lab group does the PLC for you. Okay. And that, that becomes, like again, that becomes really important. You'll, you'll find out that my labs and circuits are wrong. If you don't work as a group, I guess you'll be working in the PLC after the lab. So you need to be proficient with your time. Um, so there's where you'll find me here. I assume that you sort of looked at this uh, drop down menu here. And if I go to the syllabus, there's all the stuff I got to write. Um, the things that you'll find here is that I really try to emphasize the textbook. I think the textbook is on its either ninth or tenth edition, and it's pricey as you already saw. Any edition works. Um, some people don't even read the textbook. What they do is they go after my lecture notes. And I tried to show that. So if you go to the example web page, okay, right in here at the bottom, I'm a lecture. And so if you were to click on one of these, for example, here's my lecture notes for Jeffrey. Does that mean that you're going to read these lecture notes and understand everything? No. Does that mean that you may have to use a textbook? Yes. Do I recommend reading the textbook? Absolutely. You have more contact time with the material. So of course you're going to be better off. Um, I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm a physics teacher. So what I do here is different than what electrical engineers do. Since I studied particle physics, mathematical techniques were definitely the thing that I spent a lot of time on. And so when I look at some of these circuits, I see them as a mathematical problem, and I solve them as a mathematical problem. That's not the way a lot of circuits people do it. And you'll see that, especially when we get to systems of equations, the way I write them up is very, very radically different than the book. But in the end, we always get the same material, okay? We always get the same material. So one of the things that, um, let's keep going back here. So one of the things that we should look at, and I hope you looked at this thing, is this grading policy. You can see that problem sets are 8%, quizzes are 12, PL, PLC activities are 8%, and you can see that the exams and the final exam are all worth the same. Okay, so when we look at these problem sets, what you'll find here is that the reason why we can use, you know, any uh, any addition here is that when you click on this, these are the problems that you click on. And I think I did these out of the eighth edition. And then you'll find, I don't think it's on here, but there are, so if you go to like say, in addition to these problems, I'll give you challenge problems. Challenge problems are graded. And so a lot of people, what they do is they just print them out, and that's what they use right there. Now, to help you with this thing, instead of printing them out in PDF, some people actually prefer to bring it, uh, <coughs> open it in, a, in Word, and then since they have the problems right there, 
what they'll do here is that they'll come in and they'll add space and then do the problem solving right there. I don't know if that's you, but that's an option. By the way, I do not put these up there for you, I put them for me. Because if there's a problem, I can download it, correct it, and upload it right away. But you know what? I've been teaching this shit a long time. I got 20 years here. And I know I know everything inside and out about this course, about the lab, about the PLCs, about the homework. I don't think there's are there possible errors? Yes. Have I been corrected? Absolutely, but there'll be very few. And I think Ken corrected me a couple times last year, but it was only a few times. So hopefully we don't see any of these years. So that's that. And then Sorry. how many do not know what a PLC is? Yeah. And I won't go over it. <laughs> so then if you look at this thing here, uh, one last thing here is that there's the labs here. The first lab this week is not a great lab. All it is to get used to the power supply and the board. I'm assuming you don't know about the circuit's power supply. It has uh, three power supplies in one. That means it could produce three voltage sources out of one. Actually, if you know how to wire it, you could produce four, possibly five. So that's something that will be useful later on. But here, the important thing is that you gotta get used to the circuit board. I don't like the circuit boards and the physics. They're not useful. And you'll see that this breadboard is what we wanna do. It's cleaner, it's nicer, and it looks just like the picture that you drew on your paper. That's the nice thing about it. I assume that some of you may have some wiring experience. My experience is, is that you'll all catch up fairly quickly. Because you have to. <laughs> you'll see. My PLCs have a lot of wiring. Okay? There's a lot of wiring that goes on. And I the way I look at it is that the more wiring you do, the better it is. There are some simulations that you'll have to do. But most of the PLCs are definitely going to be wiring. But towards the end, as we get to more mathematical problem solving, you'll see that you'll have to really do, you'll have a lot of the PLCs are, are set up to help you with the lab. Because some of these labs are really hard. And what I mean here is that if you're not on top of it, like for example, if you look at the. Uh, PLC here, look at that, there's a PLC 8 that says P spice for lab 9. And it's it's super, super helpful to do that before you get into lab. Because sometimes, you know, even though your circuit looks absolutely right, there's a problem. Because you can't get it to actually work. And sometimes I'll look at that and I go like, shit, I don't know what's going on. And there's typically some bad, you know, point on the breadboard or there's a broken resistor and you don't realize it. It's just all these little details. So that problem solving in the lab becomes super important. And you should be able to know almost instantly I give you 30 seconds to find out if you have a problem with your digital multimeter. Because you're going to have to. And you're going to see here is that it's not magic. It, there's actually some very reasonable ways to go and say, well, is it my meter? Or is it my wiring? Or is there a problem on the board? And that's one of the things that we will teach you here. Another thing that's going to be big in the lab is the oscilloscope. Half of the labs really are about the oscilloscope. And that will take some time. There's in Data Studio, no, not Data Studio, in Capstone, and 4B, you probably used it. Well, in some sense, that that is sort of like an oscilloscope. But there's some You'll see there's some pretty very big differences. And learning
learning how to read an oscilloscope becomes important. I think that's it. Any other questions? Right, so when I look at this thing here, let me, let's talk about the schedule real quick and how to read my schedule. So if you look at the schedule here, I got chapter one, chapter two, then I got first problem set. So the first problem set is due on Monday. Um, I gotta finish these two chapters on Monday. If for some reason I don't finish it, no, nope, I gotta finish it. I gotta finish it. And you know what? If I don't finish these things, I'm gonna cut it off. I'm still gonna quiz you on that because I'm gonna say you finish those two chapters. You'll see that some of these chapters are long. <laughs> One of the most important things in this course that will help you for the second portion of this course, if you're in EE, is learning what I call simple circuits. Learning to read series in parallel. And I kid you not, my experience is, is that some of you can read it. Most of you will not. And it's sort of like, you know, sort of like one of the questions my, my daughter asked me some years ago. She had a, I don't know what it was, it was something like this. I don't know, maybe, I think it was like this. I don't know, I'm just making things up. And I said, solve for X. I looked at it and go, what do you mean? I said, says solve for x. So I was like, you're crazy. He says, you can't do that. And I'm going, look at it, right? If you were to look at that and you were to say x, you'd go like, well, I don't know what to do. That's kind of a silly question. That's kind of what's going to happen to you in series and parallel. You're going to go like, what do you mean this isn't series and parallel? But I'm going to say, what do you mean? <laughs> right? And you know, and you're going to find that as we go through series and parallel, colors are really dull. A lot of people typically have one of those little pins that has what, like three or four colors? It's a goddamn useful. Okay, really, really, really useful. Okay. You should go over the roster, then we should get started, right? I think that's the one or two. So let's, let's go over the roster. I know most of the people out here are not.